Hello and welcome. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Today we're going to be going through part three of our ongoing test drive of the Unitrends backup up, a recovery appliance. Uh, last time uh, we did a test on how to uh, add a client and it worked very, very well. Uh, something that many times in an enterprise application can be very hard to do. So again, uh, the appliance technique, I think, uh, continues to work well for Unitrends. Uh, it makes a lot of the process easy. Uh, but what I really have liked about the product so far is that even though it's an appliance, the, the software is fairly robust. And um, given my history in, in the backup space, I, I like to have a lot of options. So let, let's go ahead and go through this part, which we're going to create a new schedule for the different clients uh, to be backed up. So the first thing we want to do is uh, go to our backups tab. You can see here right now that we have a backup currently running. Um, so anyways, the first thing we have to do is go to our backups tab. There, there's really two steps, and may, maybe actually three, uh, in configuring a backup. We're going to go ahead and show you two of them uh, today, and then we'll do another one, uh, uh, show you the other part in an upcoming uh, video. Um, the, the three steps are creating a, a calendar by which the schedule will execute, creating the schedule itself, and then also creating what, what Unitrends calls a selection list or an exclusion-exclusion uh, list of what you do and don't want to back up. Uh, the exclusion or the selection list is relatively optional, so that's why we'll do it in a, in a second part, but we'll give you some idea how that works as well. So the first thing we want to do is uh, go to the calendars tab. Uh, you can see that there's uh, some schedules already in there uh, for us, to, or calendars already in there for us to execute on. Uh, we'll just go ahead and create a new one just to uh, show you the process. So we'll call this uh, schedule uh, uh, quarterly uh, fulls, uh, da uh, daily differentials. And then we'll go ahead and set it up to create our first uh, master backup. You do that just by clicking on the word master, dragging it where you want it on the calendar, and selecting uh, what you want to have happen. So again, we'll select quarterly. We'll say we want this to run at 1 a.m. Uh, and we'll have it uh, execute on the last day of every third month. Uh, once we confirm that, you'll see that the master uh, backup shows up there just so we can get the schedule going uh, and we, we place it there and then I, according to our command uh, we'll also back up on the last uh, day of the month. Uh, then the, obviously as I said before we want to uh, then do differentials or incrementals during the week so we will uh, click on the differentials tab and we'll just select daily We'll have that also fire off at 1 a.m. Uh, we can change it here if we wanted to. Uh, how often we want to do it is uh, we'll have this do uh, probably go every day. Um, and then we're all set there and we'll just hit confirm. And then the differentials will happen all the time. Now again, the way because this is a disk-based uh, appliance, um, the only thing that's sent um, in these days is just the, the change data. So uh, those backups tend to go fairly quickly. So once we've created the calendar and we like the, the name and everything, all we got to do is click Save. And you can see that it has been created for us right there. And again, like I said, there, there are some sample calendars. You don't even need to go to this extreme if you want to, but I, I, I don't know if I've seen a calendar creation um, that's easier. So the next step then uh, is to create a schedule. And what we do is give it a name and we'll call this, uh, we'll call this our Windows uh, backup schedule. And as you might guess, we're gonna just back up Windows boxes on this one. And we have two of those active right now. So we'll go ahead and add those to a, a VM 
uh, and a standalone uh, box. And we'll hit schedule. Oops, sorry. And it kindly reminds me that I need to use uh, my quarterly fulls and dailies. Um, by the way, the term for unit trends, the, they use the term master instead of fulls. Uh, I apologize, old habits die hard. So anyways, we've got everything set now. We've got the two clients we want in there. Um, and we can also, if at this point, if we wanted to, we could use ex exclusions and inclusions, uh, filtering out either volumes or file types or things like that. Uh, again, a very, very sophisticated uh, feature within the product, uh, but also easy to get to and use. And that's something we'll record uh, and show you next time. But for now, we're just going to take the defaults on all this and hit schedule. And you can see it checks the connection and, and everything's all set and ready to go. So we just click OK. Uh, and if we go to our schedules, you will see that our Windows backup schedule has not been run and it's set to go off tomorrow. And it's just the Windows boxes. So again, very, very easy to do. Um, uh, by the way, if we wanted to fire it off right now, we could with the run now option. Uh, you can enable and disable schedules from here. We can go back in and modify uh, schedules. So uh, full control over all that uh, as well. So, so again, uh, really uh, simple uh, access to set up schedules. We showed you how to add clients last time. Placing them into a schedule is equally easy. Um, you know, we continue to be impressed with the product. Performance uh, is good. Uh, and uh, everything uh, tends to work real well. So the, the next um, segment we'll do will be on developing an exclusion list and uh, setting that up. Um, and then from there, we'll continue on with our testing. So again, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, I'm George Crump with Storage Switzerland.